So in this video, I'm going to take some time to point out things that are the best and the worst of CES. Um, CES is a uh, overwhelmingly large thing to try and cover. No way I can see everything um, during the time that I'm there, but these are the things that I felt were interesting, um, both personally and for libraries. So let's take a look. First up was my favorite uh, non-necessary weird piece of tech. This is the Flappet, a mechanical counter uh, that is API driven and can display any number that you throw at it. I just found it really quaint and entertaining. Next up is my choice for the uh, best 3D printer for libraries. This is the Lulzbot Mini by Aleph Objects. Um, this machine is rock solid. It's uh, Big Brother. The Taz is something that I've used for a number of months now, uh, giving me absolutely no problems. I think this is the best entry level printer for libraries uh, going today. And there were two different robots that I thought were really interesting for library programming. This is the Dash. Um, this company makes the Dot and the Dash, two programmable robots that can be used in educational programs with youth. Um, I think these are fantastic and great learning tools for libraries to check out uh, for uh, youth programming. Uh, the other robot that I liked is the Ozobot. Uh, also uses the same programming language, the Google Blockly language. Very inexpensive, really cheap way for libraries to start doing some uh, education with, uh, with young adults and children. This was one of the more interesting fuse deposition uh, printers that I saw. This is a massive print bed. This was something like three feet by three feet. Uh, not for every library, but if you're a very large engineering library, this thing runs about $20,000. It might be worth it. Now we're on to the ridiculous. This was a signage solution that included a three-dimensionally movable robot arm that would move the sign around as it displayed things. Clearly for not library use, but uh, really an interesting use for, uh, for a robot. And speaking of robots, aside from the flying kind, the drones that I like so much, uh, these were the most adorable robots that I saw while I was at CES. These are, um, as you can see, they look like small dinosaurs that are uh, currently chasing a ball. They can be programmed to move in unison to do all sorts of interesting things. Uh, really, again, very interesting for youth programming. And then the last two, the Ridiculous and the Inspired. The Ridiculous is this Bluetooth floating magnetic speaker. Absolutely no reason for this to even exist. The Inspired, however, was really inspiring. Uh, robotic uh, supports that allowed a, a paraplegic man to walk. So that's it for my coverage of CES 2015. We saw lots of technology. Um, mostly I focused this year on robots and on 3D printers because those were the two areas that I thought were the most interesting and had come the farthest in the last couple of years. Uh, next year, who knows what we'll see, but I imagine I will be back and I will be covering it for libraries once more. If you've got any questions or would like to follow up with me on anything that you've seen, want some more information, please feel free to do so. My website is jasongriffey.net. My CES 2015 coverage for libraries is made possible by Springshare, the leading cloud-based software provider with almost 5,000 institutions and 78 countries on board. Their LibApps cloud-based suite includes LibGuides, the most popular curation and knowledge sharing tool for libraries, LibAnswers, an online reference and help desk platform, LibCal, a complete calendaring and room booking solution for libraries, LibAnalytics, a single platform to store and analyze all library data, and LibStaffer for managing staff schedules and service point staffing. Contact them today. Get your library on LibApps, the library success platform.